Okay, guys, welcome. Round three for me today. Tired. Guys, do me a favor. Hit the like button. Share this link on your social media platforms. Be prayed up. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill me. We'll see how long the conversation lasts. <clears throat> I'll open up the Q&A, but pray for me. The Holy Spirit, use my mouth as his mouthpiece. He comes to the forefront and that the Holy Spirit will constrain me and control me. Give me perfect recall of every jot, tittle, portion of scripture and perfect exegesis to be bold, but loving and patient. The Holy Spirit will convict this young man. He's young, so he's bold enough to say, yes, he'll go on. Pray, it's a fruitful conversation. And the Holy Spirit will illuminate us and guide us to the fullness of the truth and live it out for the glory of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. We need you, Father. We need you, Lord Jesus. We need you, Holy Spirit. Strengthen my throat, my arteries, my heart, my lungs and chest with the health I need. Grant me the discipline to stay healthy and fit and use my health to glorify Jesus Christ and build the church. Bless the internet connection, the audiovisual qualities. Anoint me to speak powerfully and clearly and patiently and boldly without error, without stammering, without mistakes, without stuttering. Save me from misinterpretation. Make my voice pleasing to the ears of your servants and open our ears and our eyes to your beauty and glory and majesty in Scripture, to obey and live out Scripture, to prove our love for Jesus Christ and not be hypocrites. And please anoint me with wisdom and knowledge and illumination that we all need, Father. We all need, Lord Jesus. We all need Holy Spirit. Take over the session. Take over the ministries. Take over our lives fully and completely. Own us, our loved ones, my daughters. Bring them, please. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, please, Jesus, my Lord, to me. And reinvigorate us, rejuvenate us, replenish us, revive us, <clears throat> refresh us. And to offer our bodies living sacrifices and destroy our vanity, our pride, and arrogance. And bless the session. And bring those you want here. So I'm used of the Spirit to teach them according to your will. Save me from error. We praise you. We need you and love you, Father. We praise you and need you and love you, Lord Jesus. We praise you and need you and love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory to the Father, Son, Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. Name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. We trust you, Father. We trust you, Lord Jesus. We trust you, Holy Spirit. Perfect the gifts you've given me to use them lawfully to glorify Christ and make us doers of your word. In Jesus' name, Lord, Father, Spirit. All right, let me send him the link. And I'll open up the Q&A if it doesn't last too long. I don't know. He's a young man. He seems respectful, and I appreciate that. He was at least bold enough to take me up on the challenge. Many people don't. He's listening, so here you go. He'll come on. He's going to prove the Sabbath. Let's see. All right. May God keep us humble and teachable, and I pray that for myself, and remove the beams from our eyes, right, to be doers of the word. Who goes on Joe Rogan? Me? No, don't make me more than I am. May God destroy my pride and arrogance and ego and keep me humble and teachable. Don't make me more than I am, who said. I'm not. Everything good is from the Holy Spirit. And I'm not trying to be humble. I want to be, but no, I'm not that. May the Lord bless you, not make me more than I am. Guard your hearts. May you destroy every form of idolatry and blasphemy. I will disappoint you, I promise you, because I'm human. I'm a maggot. So I sent him the link. He should be coming on. And then I'll open up to Q&A in a minute. It, let's see how long it lasts. Because I'm tired, I'm old, I'm not young. Okay? Okay, good job, buddy. How are you, young man? Oh, uh, would you like to you, sir? Speak? Oh, hello, hello. Mm -hmm. We can hear you. Keep talking. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> um, Speak louder, buddy, so we can know your mic is good. We're hearing you, but talk. Don't just say. Oh, uh, I'm talking about this. This is a Sabbath discussion about keeping the Sabbath. Yeah, how old are you? I'm 20 years old. That's good. So that's why I'm old enough to be your father. What particular church you go to? Um, I do not go to any specific church. I just... Uh, what? You're churchless? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I talk with people like on the Sabbath day, of course, because that's the Hebrews 10.25 commandment. Yeah, we'll talk but, about that. We'll see if you know. But my point is, if you're following the Bible... So that means you're going to be consistent and follow it all the way through to the best of your ability. So right. why are you churchless? You don't attend the congregation. You're not assembling. Well, I'm assembling, just not in person. 
And why wouldn't you assemble in person? Do you have a leader over you? Uh, not a leader, but we all just like gather together as like brothers and sisters. Yeah, but Hebrews around. thirteen seventeen, which you just quoted, Hebrews ten twenty five says, "Obey your leaders, who give an account for you." So, who is your leader that gives an account for your soul? Um, God. One more time. See, this is where now I'm sensing the attitude. God told you He appointed human leaders over you. Hebrews thirteen seventeen. So who is your leader appointed by God? Um, who do you I guess submit I could to? Also, what was that? Who do you submit to? Read Hebrews 13, 17. Okay. Oh, 13, 17? Yeah. Uh, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch over your souls as they uh, as they that must give account that they may give, that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. I can give you dozens of more passages of bishops that are accountable for your soul as you submit to them as part of the church. So do you have a leader that you submit to, is spirit-filled, or you're just online with a group of people and you're doing church irrespective of what the Bible says? Because you're trying to get me to follow Sabbath, but that part you follow, but this part you don't. So do you have a leader? Do you have a bishop? Uh, no. Um, okay. It could also be talking about the leaders that God okay. ordains, which would be the government. No. Reread it again. They give account for your souls, and they're going to have to answer the Lord. The government doesn't give an account for your soul when it comes to spiritual matters. You just butchered verse 17 from its context. Okay. And that's what you're going to be doing with the Sabbath, as I'm going to show. I mean, the whole yeah. thing assumes that someone does have rule over you and never commands you anywhere. It assumes that, that these are spiritual leaders that you are to imitate, leaders appointed to watch over you, Backed up by Acts 12, 20, 27, 32. So again, I'm seeing you're a young punk who butchers the scripture. So I'm going to have to put you in your place. Since you don't like that verse, go to Acts 20, 27 to 32. And I'm going to ask you again, Bible butcher, who is your leader and bishop? Because you're not a bishop. Acts 20, 27 to 32. And if you're going to play with that, read 17 to see Paul ain't talking to the government. He's talking to the elders. Acts 20, 17. Okay. Yeah, your arrogance is coming through, but I'm going to humble you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to beat you like my son. Acts 20, 17, who is he addressing? Acts 20, 17. Is this going to be about the Sabbath, or are you just going to talk I'm about gonna, other stuff? I'm going to bury you in the Sabbath in a minute. Just be patient, because I'm showing you're a hypocrite. You're not a Bible <clears throat> student. You don't follow. You're a hypocrite. I'm calling out your hypocrisy. So be patient. I'm going to school you, young man. Acts you 20, 27. 17. 2017 mm -hmm. and from are you sure this is the right one and from Miletus no, he sent to Ephesus yeah, from Miletus who did he summon from Miletus and he called the elders of the church okay so did he call the governments did he call President Biden or the elders of the church uh he called the elders of his church now notice 2732 who are the elders the very leaders that you try to <clears throat> ignore that give an account for your soul Acts 20 27 to 32. 27 to 32. Mm -hmm. For I have not shunned to declare unto question. you. Hold on before you read. Guys, get ready for your questions. I'm going to open up the QA in a minute, but go ahead. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. Wait, who oversees the church? The flock? The Holy Ghost. Reread it again. Whom the Holy Ghost appoint to oversee the flock? Um, the council of God. Read it again. You can't even read context and you want to prove the Sabbath for me. Who is he talking to? Uh, I'd have to go back further to figure that out. The 17. Why do you think Einstein, I said, read 17? Reread it again. And from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. Do I need to read? have you read it a third time for it to sink in? Who is no. he talking to? The elders. Okay, so who did the Holy Spirit appoint to oversee the flock, the church? Elders. The government or elders? No. Elders, I said that. Oh, okay, what no, you, you said I didn't know who they are. Okay, so in Hebrews 13, 17, same context. These are the leaders who give an account for your soul. One more time, so we go on Sabbath. Who is your leader, your elder, your bishop? What's his name? What church? Who do you submit to? 
You don't have one, right? So we can get to the Sabbath. Just say, I don't have it because that part of the Bible I don't like. Hold on, my mic's going out. But yeah, I would say that I do not have okay. any like. So now, if you really believe in the Bible, leader. repent and get yourself in order. Now, talk about the Sabbath. You're butchering scriptures as if you think I don't know them. You want me to school you on Isaiah 66, 23, which you butchered? Sure. Okay. Can you read the context of Isaiah 66? Because this is the one you try to use against me. 23. Yes. As if I, that was Isaiah, I've never heard that before. Okay. In Isaiah 66, it's the same. This, sorry, you're cutting out well, a lot. Hold tell on. me what it says. Read it. Read the context. Start at 17 and read to 24. 17. Okay. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens, behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination slowly, in the mouth. Slowly. slowly. I, so okay, I've read this a hundred times. It doesn't give a damn what you read. People are listening. It's not about you. So you're okay. coming off as an arrogant okay. jerk. Okay. Okay. Shut That's your what mind I'm doing. That's what you're doing. Read seven. I'm older than you. I'll talk down to you, little punk. Keep reading. Okay. 17 to 25. They that sanctify yeah. themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, to Tarshish, Pol, and Lud, that draw the bow, to Tabal and Javan, to the isles far off that have not heard my fame neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations, upon horses, and in chariots, and in litters, and upon mules, and upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make say, uh, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before right now. me. Keep reading. Saith the Lord. That's emphasize Sabbath because I'm going to emphasize priests, Levites, and swine to be your burial. So keep going. Keep going. And they shall Three. go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Now, I'm going to show you why you're a Bible butcher, because you focus on the Sabbath to Sabbath. But did you remember in 17, it also talks about anyone who eats swine flesh will be detestable, and that there will be priests and Levites in the new heaven, new earth? Yes. So, can you show me in the New Testament that in the age to come, that there will be in the new heaven, new earth, Levites and priests. Can I show you in the New Testament where it says that? Because you believe the New Testament doesn't contradict Isaiah, right? Yeah. And you believe the New Testament fulfills Isaiah, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, no, if we're not, not entirely. Not not yet. Jerk, then you because... know that according to Hebrews, if you listen a little better instead of barking, you know in Hebrews that Jesus now has consummated Levitical priesthood because now he comes in an order of Melchizedek, it's a different priesthood, and that's eternal. So you just created a contradiction between Hebrews and Isaiah. Reconcile that. Reconcile it. There's still going to be priests. No Levitical priests in the age to come. Revelation 20, 4 to 6. So let's try this again. You're reading well, that's of after Isaiah. the millennial reign. You're forgetting about let's the millennial reign. Let's try this again. Period. Where does Isaiah 66 talk about this happening during the millennial reign, it says new heaven, new earth. Did you read that? Yeah. And this when whole, does the new heaven, new earth take place? When does the new heaven, new earth take place in Revelation After 21? The reign. But that, so but can the you show me where, the Levites, until after where the, the Levites and priests will be in the new heaven, new earth? Show me that New Testament. Don't it doesn't that say end. that, but the new heaven and new earth comes uh, after hold the on. priests. Wait, wait, wait. No, it comes after you. the priests. Let me bury you. Show me anywhere in the millennial reign there will be Levitical priests according to the New Testament. And after. Anytime Ezekiel. you want, show it to me. It doesn't have to be in the New Testament for it to be true. Yes, it does. Because Hebrews says it is the priesthood of Melchizedek. Hebrews 7, making obsolete the Levitical priesthood. What part of Hebrews 7 don't you get? Let's try it again. Since the New Testament says Levitical priesthood has been done away with to make 
place for a new priesthood in the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 7. Reconcile your perversion of Isaiah 66 with the New Testament because you believe the New Testament. Yep. Reconcile it. Hebrews 7, 8, 9 says the Levitical priesthood is being done away with. The old covenant is obsolete, making way for a new covenant and a new priesthood. And that priesthood of Melchizedek is forever. There is no Levitical priesthood. But your reading of Isaiah 66, there must be. Show me how you reconcile the contradiction you created in your mind. What's your what's your reconciliation then? I can reconcile. Don't worry about me because remember, I'm the Bible butcher. You're trying to school me. I'll reconcile easy. I want you to reconcile the passages with your misreading of Isaiah 66. There's going to be priests. Did you hear what priest I said exists in the New Testament? Or I have to repeat it a third time. No Levitical priests. Peter Reconcile seven. your distortion of I-66 with the New Testament, Sabbatarian. Because I'm going to school you step by step. I told you. I was thinking you're humble, but you're getting too arrogant. May the Lord use me to humble you so you can repent. I want you to be restored. So can you reconcile that? Show me in Hebrews 7 what you're referring to. Can you read Hebrews 7, 8, 9, 10? Has the priesthood been replaced by the order of Melchizedek? And Christ is thy priest forever. No Levitical priesthood. Have you even read your New Testament, buddy? Yes. Okay. So let's try it again. Hebrews 7, 8, 9 makes it clear. The priesthood of the Levites, the Old Testament, done away with, obsolete, to make way for a new covenant and a new priesthood in the order of Melchizedek, Jesus Christ. There is no Levitical priesthood in the New Testament. So I'm going to ask you the 10th time because we're wasting time. Reconcile Isaiah 66 the way you interpret it with the New Testament. There is no Levitical priesthood. Show me the exact scripture. Don't give me just like four. Which chapters. part of Hebrews 7 says that Melchizedek is a shadow of Christ and that the Levites paid tight to Melchizedek while in Abraham's loins because Christ comes in the order of Melchizedek and he is the high priest forever. Okay, he's the high priest. That means there's lower ones than him. Yes, and which part of, I just said, there are priests in the New Testament, but they're not Levitical priests. Are you getting it or are you playing stupid? Okay, then they're not Levitical priests, but they're priests. Okay, but Isaiah 66 says there will be Levitical priests. Reconcile that. It says there will be Levites and priests. Priests from where? Do you want to school you numbers 3, 5 to 10, that the Levites and priests means Levitical priests? And the priests okay, are from you the line my question Aaron? then. How come it says that they're going to worship from Sabbath to Sabbath? Because you're butchering the scripture because you're stupid. No, that's that's why. Why, are they, why are they worshiping from Sabbath to I, Sabbath? I'll get to it if you stop Tell barking me. and listen. You can't okay, answer. The same passage that says Sabbath to Sabbath says there'll be Levitical priests. Now reconcile that. There's going to be priests. Levitical priest from Levi, from yeah, the line Levi of Levi is just another way of saying priest. No. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Now you just did the reinterpretation. Now that's where you're going to be your funeral service. Reinterpret it for me. Go ahead. What does that mean? It's going to be priests. No, no. You said it's simply another way of saying Levites priest, but not Levi. another way of saying priest. What about eating swine? What will God do to those who eat swine and mice? Play sword. But wait. In Acts 15, when Peter, James, John decided on what the Gentiles could eat not eat. They didn't forbid them from That's these meats. For. Say what? That's not what that was for. Let's the try it again. Was... Let's try this again. Listen carefully, Bible butcher. When the decision came for the Gentiles keeping the law, not just circumcision, circumcision by way of entering into Covenant faithfulness to keep the law of Moses. That's the context. And the law of Moses includes Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14, where you don't eat camels or mice or swine. The Gentiles were loose from those commands. Reconcile that for me. They weren't loose from those commands. Those they were loose. Read verses. Acts 15. Open up Acts 15. Read verses 111. Bible butcher. Go ahead. Read it. Acts 15, 1 to 11. So okay. I can send you packing. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them. Slowly, so we can hear your butchering. Slowly. 
Okay. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phenis and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Do what with the law of Moses? Keep it. And that's the same law that has Leviticus 11, Deuteronomy 14, the dietary restrictions mentioned in Isaiah 66. So don't you butcher well, they, the text. They originated earlier than that. Let's try this again. I mean, we can what talk about the dietary history? laws instead if you want, but I'm trying law to. The law of Moses. Told me to go on okay. the, not the Buddy, law. you want me to send you to your vomit? The law of Moses includes <laughs> dietary. Hey, 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 you little filthy. The law of Moses people. also includes the Ten Commandments, but that doesn't mean we just get rid of that. Hey, we're going to get to the Ten Commandments, coward. Don't run. Because Isaiah You're 66 the one that's talking says, about the dietary Isaiah, laws. Shut the hell up. Go to hell, dude. Shut the hell up. Get out of here, you little punk. Get the hell out of here, you stupid. Yep, I said go to hell. Well, if you don't repent. Anyway, guys, open Q&A. The guy says, dumb bastard, an arrogant little garbage. May the Lord convict you to repent because you're going to hell if you don't repent. Follows the scriptures he likes and ignores the ones he, he doesn't. See, they can't deal with Isaiah 66 because they're Bible butchers. So you're going to end up reject the New Testament and following Tovia Singer. That's what you're going to follow. Anyway, if you guys want me to stick around, we'll do Q&A. It's up to you, right? It's up to you. You guys want me to end it or do you want me to Q&A? So a warning to you, young, you young little punk bastard. You're going to hell. You better repent because off to hell you go, you Bible butcher, you son of the devil. Yeah, another fake. There you go. Can't even deal with passage. The Lord moved Stupid, dumb bastard. Anyway, Q&A. Joshua, I don't want to bring you up if you don't have questions because we're not here to preach sermons, mister. I like you. The, the link is here, StreamYard. Come and ask me questions or I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to go do errands. It's your time to ask, right? If you don't come up, I can't do anything because I'm not here to preach. I'm here to answer questions. Yeah. He's a dog. What's up, Philip? Hello. Hello. So um, I've been reading the Bible with my son every day. Wyatt, started... hold on one second, brother. Wyatt, can you come up and carry the conversation, see if I can't answer this question? I buried you, that dog, and your fake doctrine by the grace of Jesus Christ. But Wyatt, you're a dog. You're going to bark. Come up. Let's continue the conversation because I'm going to bury you in Isaiah 6, 6, showing you you guys are Bible perverts. You don't know how the Old Testament is to be interpreted. That's what I was showing you filthy son of the devil, you cowards. No respect, you scum. May the Lord convict you and chasten you until you repent. Go ahead, brother. I just had to put this guy in this place. Okay, so I've been reading the Bible with uh, my son every day. And um, we started from Genesis. And when we got to uh, Judges, um, <gasps> no. I uh, had always heard that like uh, the angel of the Lord was Jesus. Yes, it but is. But the first time that I caught... Uh, where it seems like it def like it, it hit me like a snap was uh, Judges thirteen. Yep, three to and, twenty-four. Um, it seems that there's all three of the Trinity in that same chapter. I don't know if there's all three. Judges thirteen, three to twenty-four. It's the man of God who's the angel of the Lord, who when Manoah and his wife recognized, saw that they were looking at God in human form. So where did you get yeah. the Trinity? And they thought they were going to die. So where did you get the Trinity? The Trinity, uh, so they're, they're speaking, um, so they realize that that's not um, the God that if you look at, you'll die. No. So that would be. Brother, you got to be careful. You're distorting the text. You're misreading the passage that say, if you see God, you shall die. That's true unless God gives you the grace to look upon him and not consume you in his wrath. So you're misreading okay. it because it does but say. But the spirit is in, chat, in verse 25, though. Can you read 25 for me, sir? It says, uh, this might be the translation, I might, uh, but it says, the spirit of the Lord began to stir in him while he was in Manehadan, 
between Zora and Eshtul. Yes, so that's what you mean. I thought you were talking about in the encounter with the angel of God, the spirit is yeah. mentioned. This is talking about Samuel. I'm sorry, Samson. So on about Samson being stirred up. Yes, that's true. I thought you're saying that in the conversation no. with the angel of God, the spirit showed up. No, yes. Samson was empowered and filled by the spirit of Yahweh. Yes, so the spirit of Yahweh, that's two. And the angel of God who appears as a man, that would be three. So you can, yes, you can say that, but the impl implication I got is that Manoah himself and his wife encountered the Trinity there. No, they didn't. So they yeah. encountered two of them, but they realized that there, they realized there's three of them. So there you go again. Where's the two of them? What the encounter two of them? You mean that Samson was filled with the spirit of Yahweh? Let me go read the... Uh... Let me read it. They didn't encounter the spirit of Yahweh. The spirit of Yahweh filled Samson, but it doesn't mean... Yeah, it began to stir. Okay. Yeah, yeah I understand what you're saying. There's a difference between the spirit empowering Samson and seeing the spirit. We're not told they encountered the spirit in the sense that the spirit revealed themselves. Yeah, because you usually that... see the spirit. It's usually a dove. Well, not always. They're not always, me. but yeah. You're killing me, I get man. what you're saying. You're killing me, dude. <laughs> Buddy, old pal, let's take it a little slowly. <laughs> the spirit did appear one time as a dove, but the spirit also appeared as tongues of fire in Acts 2, verses 1 and 4. Yeah. And we know in Revelation, the spirit appears as seven lampstands and seven eyes on the face of the lamb. So the spirit appears in different ways, in different shapes, so that you can know that you're encountering the spirit. In Judges 13, when it says the spirit of Yahweh stirred up Samson, that doesn't mean that they saw the Spirit visibly. It simply means it's the Holy Spirit that empowers people to do what they do, whether you see Him or not. But in Judges 13, they only saw one figure visibly, the angel of God appearing as a man. That's all they saw, but they realized He's no mere angel, He's God. That you can say. So you can say if I read the entire chapter, we have the Trinity in that you have the Spirit of Yahweh, so Yahweh and His Spirit, that's two, and the angel of God, who's also God, appearing as a man. Yeah, that you can say. Okay, that makes so a I, lot of sense. Though. Like someone said, glory to God, you're reading the Bible with your son, but tread lightly so you don't misunderstand and your son misunderstands. So glory to God. But yeah, so you're right. It The Trinity is there, but they didn't appear visibly. Only the angel of God appeared as a man. And that doesn't mean they don't appear visibly. There are places in which all three appear visibly, but that's not one of them. You with me? Yeah, I, I yeah, because you don't. You, you're saying you don't see that they in the story did not see them visibly. Yes, the but narrator. But you could. To, yes. See yes. the Trinity in the text by yes. reading. Yes, you can see that clearly. It's Trinitarian. Yahweh, Spirit of Yahweh, Angel of God. The narrator is okay. telling you that it's the Spirit of Yahweh that comes upon the judges and prophets to empower and inspire them. That doesn't mean they're seeing the spirit visibly. But yes, the person reading the narration sees three. Yahweh, spirit of Yahweh, angel of God, who appears as a man, who is God. Yeah, so the narrator is narrating that you have a triune God. It's fair. Yahweh, the spirit of Yahweh, and the angel of God, who is God, appearing as a man. Trinity, but they didn't see the Trinity visibly. So yes, exactly, Philip. You're doing good. Okay. Uh, uh, the question I did have, though, yes. is, um, is there any um, Trinitarian text uh, prior to this that oh, I missed? Plenty, Woo! plenty. If you read I, uh, the entire Pentateuch, starting from Exodus on, you're going to see Yahweh appears with the angel of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. They appear visibly. And the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of God, is filling Moses and the elders of Israel. It's all throughout the Pentateuch. You'll get it oh, so, in Exodus. So go back and read uh, Exodus again. Yes, you got to read. Even in Genesis, there's reference to the spirit of Yahweh. For example, open up Genesis 41, 38. Genesis 41. Hey, Wyatt, you barking filth. Are you going to come up and put me in my place, continue conversation, that, that dog, that arrogant jerk? And by the way, I want you to go to hell too, because when I say go to hell, I mean go to the Valley of Hinnom. I've told you the word hell comes from Gehinnam, the Valley of Hinnom, and it's a place in Israel. So go to hell, buy your plane ticket to go there. 
Anyway, go ahead, brother. Okay, so you said uh, 41, chapter 41, uh, verse 48. 38. Well, who 38. came upon okay. Joseph? 38. Okay. Pharaoh said to the ministers, could we find another man like this in whom one finds the spirit of God? See? So they know the spirit of his God is filling him with wisdom knowledge that's mind-blowing. So here's the spirit of God. Now let me show you some references in Genesis where you see there are three distinct persons. So here you have the spirit of God, right? Yeah. Okay, so now go to Genesis 31, 10 to 13. Spark, you want me to get you out of here, buddy? And Eric, why are you engaging these dogs? If they want to talk about intercession, they can come and join me. Do not distract. Okay, anyway. In Genesis 31, 10 to 13, Jacob has a dream. Yeah. Jacob has a dream. And in that dream, he sees the angel of God. And like Manoah and his wife, he realizes this angel. Oh, he says, "Here I am." No, brother uh, Philip, I'm going to smash my head against the wall. <laughs> Genesis 31, 10 to 13. 10 to 13. 10 to 13, yeah. So start at 10. If you want to, because if you don't, you're going to see "Here I am," and you're going to wonder why I'm confused. Once. I love when... you. <laughs> Laugh at my expense, sir. It's all right. I'm just a comedian. Go ahead. Once, when the animals were in heat, I had a dream. I looked out and saw the he goats that were streaked, speckled, and modded uh, were ready to breed. The let me explain angel what's of... happening. Philip, let me explain the context. Okay. Jacob is working for his father, Lebanon, who owns livestock, and he's cheating Jacob and oppressing him by, by saying, look, any of the livestock that is streaked, spotted, spotted, speckled, will be yours. Everything else is mine. Now, what are the odds? That the cattle will come up streaked and spotted. Very low, right? Mm -hmm. So Lebanon is cheating him out of his wages because your wages were determined by your livestock, right? So the angel of God is saying, I'm seeing your oppression. So guess what I did? Now, guys, here's where the Bible's supernatural. Watch how supernatural the Bible is. He's saying it's mating season, and the only cattle that's mating are the streaked, spotted, right? cattle are you catching it yeah they're the ones mating you caught it oh yes yeah about time philip darn dude stop with the watching netflix sir anyway you got it yeah so who are the only cattle mating the street the street the, the, speckle, the, the spotted mind. right why because that increases the chances and <clears throat> that the Cattle will come out streaked, spotted, speckled. If they're the only ones mating, that increases the livestock of coming out streaked, spotted, and speckled, right? Yeah. Which means that Jacob's cattle will be much more than Lebanon. How did the angel know genetics? <laughs> the angel knew genetics, didn't he? Yeah. So the angel of God knows if a certain breed mates, then their offspring will come out with the same characteristics. So what Angel's saying, I'm the one who caused only this type of cattle to mate and prevented the others so that your livestock will increase, not Lebanon's, because of what he's doing to you. Do you understand now the point? Yes. Okay, now why did the angel do this for him? Read. The angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, I answered, here I am. He continued, look up and see all the goats that are ready to breed are streaked, speckled, and modded because I said what Laban has done to you. I have seen. I, what did I not say? Not I said. I've seen what Laban has done to you. Oh, okay. Go ahead, read further after. I am the God of Bethel where you anointed a pillar and where you made an oath to me. Now rise, leave this country, and return to your homeland. Say what? I have seen what Lebanon is doing to you, oppressing you, meaning he is the God that sees our affliction, and he comes to our aid. So I've come to deliver you from Lebanon's oppression. Why? Because I am the God of the house of God. Bethel means house of God. You remember when you anointed a pillar? And call this the house of God. And you made a vow that if I, your God, would be with you and protect you, I would be your God and you'd give me a tenth. Well, I'm living up to my bargain. 
I am the God of the house of God, Bethel, where you might have vowed to me, so I'm keeping my promise to you. So the angel says he's the God of the house of God, the God that Jacob swore to and made a vow to. Before the rapture, Philip, because we can't hear you, dude. What's that? Did you hear my question? What's going on? No, buddy? I missed oh. it. Pins and needles. Needles and pins. Which part did you miss, Philip? Uh, what was the question? Philip, you know I love you, right? <laughs> you know I'm going to have to let you go now, right? Okay. Thank you, sir. What is it, Ben? Ben, what is it? Ben oh, there yeah. got that. Okay. Sorry, bro. Can you hear me? Yes. Don't do what he did because I want to send you out of here too. No, nah, I wouldn't do that, bro. You know me. Um, I can't hear you because you got to speak louder. Oh, sorry. Uh, I just got a question on... Uh, I can't hear you. Phone. You got to be louder, buddy. Can you hear me, bro? A little bit. You got to get closer to the mic. Oh, but now. Go ahead. What's the question? Let's see. Let's let's work through it. Okay. Uh, I got a question on Matthew 5 when it says... Uh, I got a question on who, what, five? Matthew 5, when Jesus says that whoever breaks one of these least commandments... Least of the commandments shall be least in the kingdom. What commandments? Well, I, I don't no. know, bro. That's what I'm here to ask. No, bro. You do know if you read context, bro. You don't stop at 19. Read all the way to chapter 7. Verse 27, the commandments he mentions right after that. You have heard it was said, but I say to you. You have heard it was said, but I say to you. Mm. Did he stop in verse 19, bro? No. He went all the way, right? He kept talking, and then he mentioned commands, what to do, what not to do, and how to do it. Yeah. So the commands that he says you cannot break are the commands he's about to mention, starting at 19, ending with chapter 7, verse 27. Bro, what's up, broski? <laughs> You got it now, bro? Yeah. The, the reason why I said that, though, is because uh, I came across some people that said that he was actually speaking about Iri, the law. Man. No, man. Why they stop at 19, Airi, Airi? Keep reading. You have heard it was said, but I say to you. You have heard it was said, but I say to you. And don't pray like the hypocrites. Those commands, because he doesn't end there. He keeps going to Matthew 7, 27, bro. All right. I see what you're saying. Right? I I love you, bro. Yeah. By the way, what um, you, you sound like you're Airi Airi man, Nigerian man. No, I'm Trinidadian, bro. Man, yeah, bro. Close enough, man. Airi man. All right. So you got the answer there? Yeah, I got the answer. Uh, I just got you one sure? more, though. No, it's okay, though. Yeah. I will get, I'll let you say one more, but you don't let them stop at 19. Jesus fulfills the law and the prophets, completes them by fulfilling what they said about him and explaining the true meaning of the law and prophets. And he does it by telling you what to do and how not to do it. Keep reading, right? Here, for example, same chapter when he tells you, if you go present your gift on an altar, Matthew 5, 21, but you have a grievance with your brother, leave your gift there, be reconciled to brother, and then return. See, that's the commands. Follow these, right? Yeah, right. Okay, what's your second question, bro? Um... I've came across some uh, people telling me that um, Paul and the apostles, they kept the Sabbath. Can you? Yeah, bro, you? that's okay. They did because they were Jews. Yes. Okay, if you read so, the book of Acts, right. Jews, Jews who were ethnic Jews still kept the commands of Moses that the nation kept. Because as Jews, they honored Christ by continuing to follow those commandments, like getting circumcised. But the Gentiles, who are not Jews ethnically, they were freed from those commands. That's the point I was trying to show that idiot, that arrogant prick. Lord, have mercy on me. I got to be politically incorrect. But you think the guy can behave himself long enough to get schooled so he can repent? Hmm. But are you an ethnic Jew? No, I'm not, bro. So then what does the Jews getting circumcised, keeping Sabbath, and going to the temple have to do with you? Because not only did they keep Sabbath, they also kept the dietary restrictions as Jews and got circumcised. I don't know if any one of these guys would say you got to get circumcised as a Gentile. 
Right. Bro. Acts 15 says what the Gentiles are supposed to do. Acts, if you go Acts 15, read 24 to 25, 28 to 29, Acts 15, 20, 29, and repeat in Acts 21, verse 25. Jews, however, kept following those laws. Okay, bro? Okay. Yeah, bro. I got you. Love you, bro. Any Love other questions? Too, bro? Nah, I'm good, bro. I'm good. Thank you're you. all right, man. I man. Give, give my love to Trinidad, man. Shabbat. Yeah. <laughs> all right, brother. God bless you. Yeah, bro. God bless. All right. So when you guys are gone, I'm gonna have to kick you out one at a time. Don't take it personally. What is it, Derek? Hi, hi, Sam. Uh, hi, I'm from India. I've been Pray following. India, Derek. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I've been following you since I think two or three years, and I love what you do. I love you, Derek, for loving yeah. what I do. Yeah, I just uh, I just had one question, but after that I had a request also. Okay, but, uh, well, what's yeah, the request? So, reply me. What's the request? Reply me. Well, the request is, um, you know, my sister is having a hard time in marriage, so I wanted you to yeah. pray for her. Yeah, well, brother, the way to solve that issue is she has to be plugged in a solid church, her and her husband, and be accountable to the priest. Are you guys in church? Uh, she's uh, She's a Catholic. And yeah, she goes to church. You need yeah. to take her to the priest and tell the priest of your marriage, marital problems because he has to get involved. You have to get her involved in a local church where they're going to hold her and her husband accountable. You can't just do it in isolation. Okay, brother? Yeah, yeah. Okay, like, uh, but I would, you know, I just want you to remember in her Jesus. in your prayers also. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' yes. name. We Thank trust you. the Lord. Have mercy because it's Thank you. once it's rough, God has to do a miracle. Now, what's your Thank question? You. My question is regarding Revelation 12. I've heard a Revelation lot of... Revelation 12? Uh, yeah. Uh, I've, I've heard a lot of, um, what do you say, interpretations regarding Mary. It's Reply not Mary. Me, man. Yeah, so I just wanted to know the right thing from you. Well, I did a session on Revelation 12, the woman. Now, the interpretation is the woman represents more than one person. The woman points to Eve... It's about Eve, it's mm -hmm. about Israel, and it's about Mary. It's all three. The Bible works on multiple layers and levels. Lord willing, I'll re I'll do it. If you guys want, maybe tomorrow I'll do another session, Revelation 12. I did one, but I think I need to do another one. Showing you then Revelation 12, when you guys say it's Mary, yes. But when someone says it's Israel, yes. Someone says it's Eve. Yes, it's all of them. You don't have to insist it's just Mary. Because I will show you from Revelation and other books of the Bible, there are prophecies that refer to Jesus that are also applied to the church. So a prophecy will be about Jesus and the church. All of them because they're one. So Revelation 12, it is about Mary, but it's also about Israel. Because Mary typifies Israel. Israel points to Mary, right? She is truly what Israel is, because she truly gave birth to the Messiah. So it's about Eve, who's a picture of Israel, and Israel's a picture of Mary, because Mary embodies Israel. But I'd have to go into it, and more than willing, I'll do a session yeah. tomorrow for you. How about okay, that? Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Sam. Will you reply me, though? Yeah, yeah, sure. I reply you, man. Thank you. I love you. And in Jesus' name, keep praying, but have them go to church. Your sister and her husband need to go to the priest and tell the priest we're having problems. If the church doesn't get involved, the marriage is over. Okay, thank you. All right? But yeah, thank you so much. In Jesus' name. So any other question or are you done? Done, done. I'm done. Okay, I love you, Derek. Just reply me, okay? Yeah, sure. Can you shake your head like me? Reply me, man. <laughs> Pray yeah. for India. You love India. Okay. I love India. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, brother. Love you, brother. God bless you. Yeah. What's up, Jesse? What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing fine. Like one. Hey, man. And age First... with time. <laughs> <laughs> brother, I'm, I'm kind of nervous, bro, but I feel like uh, the Holy Spirit. No one started been... again nervous, man. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not. I know, I know. No, I'm nervous because I have questions that are very serious, like to me, because I'm a Protestant and, uh, so and I love you... your channel. And You're uh, welcome, dude. I told people why I'm a little harsh because I came out of it, so I yeah. I take it more personally. But no, I've said it. I'm going to say it again. Not too clear. I would be a fool and under God's discipline if I said there aren't true believers born of spirit 
in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, in Protestantism. Of course there is, but that's one thing. If someone wants to stay that way, all right. With me, I got a curious nature. I need to know. Yeah. And that's dangerous because the more I know, uh, the more response I'll be. And the more I studied, the more I saw I was wrong. But, you know, there are people or Protestants who just worship Jesus, pray to Jesus, study the Bible, and try to obey it. They will be with the Lord in glory. They, they're content with just praising Jesus, praying to Jesus, trying to live a moral life in accord with Scripture, and not ashamed of Jesus. Of course they'll be with the Lord. The Lord is a God of infinite compassion. But anyway, I'm, what's your I, I, I would that was that was one of them was uh do you, from the Catholic perspe perspective. I'm sorry, I'm shaking, dude. Yeah, why are you shaking, man? Dude, calm down. It's my triceps. Uh, it's, I'm getting ripped. I'm getting ripped. Yeah, the man, Catholic I, I, just, I just wanted to know. Sorry to interrupt you. Sorry. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, I just want to know if it was necessary to be Catholic in order to receive receive salvation. Where's uh, what just answer? You just well, answered Catholic that for me before. Yeah, the Catholic um, Church teaches, though there's there is no salvation outside of the church, Jesus still will extend grace to believers who are baptized, even among Protestants. You'll find that in the Vatican. Yeah. So they're saying if you're baptized, then you are a member of Christ, though you don't have the fullness of the truth, and though you're not part of the true church, that doesn't mean you're not saved because many people, what they call invincible ignorance. They reject the Catholic Church because they don't know. They haven't studied. What they're rejecting is not the Catholic Church, but a misrepresentation. Okay. So the and, Catholics and, and, are very gracious and lean in saying, we recognize them as brothers and sisters, though they don't have the fullness of the truth. And uh, another question I had was about repentance. I've heard the two what? different uh, repentance. Mm -hmm. Repentance. And I've heard... Recently, I've, on my YouTube feed, I had several people come up saying that repentance is a work. And, and whoever uh, tells you repentance is a work, say faith is a work too. John 6, 27, 29. Faith is a work, something you do. So what's your point? That if I repent, that's a work, and I'm nullifying the, great, the gospel, that means you're stupid. You don't know what faith is because faith is not simply mental assent. And a confession, oh yeah, I believe Jesus is Lord and I confess. Faith as defined in scripture is a living, dynamic, active faith that results in being faithful to obey the Lord. That's why okay. in scripture, Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But those who do the will of my Father shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 7, 21. And 22, 23, for many shall say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and perform mighty miracles in your name? And I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawless ones, meaning you who did not obey my commands. So this is baloney and garbage, Protestant garbage that say, oh, it's faith alone, no works. And if you believe in repentance, that's works because they don't know what faith is. They're parroting the lie of Martin Luther and the reformers, butchering the true meaning of faith, and then the what they call isolating and separating repentance as part of that faith that results in salvation. There is no faith that doesn't result in repentance. There is no faith that doesn't lead you to obey. That faith is a dead faith. You end up in hell. Jesus said it, those who do the will of my Father. Matthew 7, 21, 23. And if they want to keep telling you, well, that's a work. Well, John 6, 27, 29. Jesus said, belief is a work. Here, let me read it for you. So that means you shouldn't believe in Jesus. Because if you believe, that's a work. And works will not save you. Therefore, you can't believe. Because if you believe, then that's a work. Well, if I don't believe, I won't receive. What are you talking about? See, these are Bible butchers. And this is the nasty fruit of the Reformation. I'm sorry to tell you. I was deceived too until the Lord opened my mind. Here, on the screen for your eyes to see. John 6, 27 and 29. John 6, 27, 29. Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you, for on him the Father God set a seal. John 6, 27, 29. Therefore, they said to him, what should we do? Not what should we say. 
so that we may work the works of God. Jesus answered said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So believing in Christ is a work. Yes, sir. Um, oh, man, I feel so much better, dude. I've been struggling with that, man. So and May the uh, Holy Spirit give you peace and joy from his word as the Spirit uses me to interpret it correctly. So don't fall for that garbage, man. Yes, Say, sir. you know what? Keep your theology to yourself. Okay, I'm repenting. I'm working. Okay, sucks being you. Live with it. I don't answer to you. Sir, I, uh, I appreciate you, brother, and I appreciate everything you do. May the Lord so you bless got it, you. right? John yes, 6, sir. 28, 29, if they're going to be consistent, believing in Jesus is a work, the yes, work sir. that God requires. So if yes, they sir. define faith to mean that faith isn't <clears throat> encompassing the works you do because you can't have true faith if you're not being faithful and you can't be faithful if you don't obey, then they're going to destroy the Bible. Yes, sir. <laughs> right? Yes, sir. Why are you crying, brother? I don't know, bro. I've been struggling off and on lately, bro. It's a, it's a private conversation, bro. But, uh, All right, well, contact yeah, just, me. How can Skype, I do that? Skype, and I'll get to you. Uh, there's another brother I have to get to. I'll get to you eventually, but be patient. Just say, hey, it's me, and I'll talk to you on Skype sometime this week, Lord willing. How, so, how do I do that? I just sent you a private chat my Skype name, Benny underscore Malik. Okay, See thank you. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. I will get to you, Lord willing, sooner than later, but be patient because there's another brother, Timbo, I have to get to, but I will try to get to you all. Be patient. Trust the Lord. Jesus is more real than you can imagine. Cry out to him. You're in his hands. Don't let Satan and his demons disturb your peace. Yes, sir. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you, Jesse. Take care. Oops. Okay, here you go, brother. It's you. Hi, brother. God bless you. Lord bless you, too. What's going on? I have two questions, brother. Sorry. I'll try to answer. One of them is from my son. Why are you so upset, man? It's like you're sad. Hi, brother. No, no. I I literally had no answer for him. So I was like, oh, I tried to give him I tried to give him some answer, but it didn't make sense in today's world. Talk Leviticus 20, verse number nine. What How can God be this cruel? Well, I don't know what he means. How can God be this cruel? Why? Can you read the verse so people can understand what you're asking? If there is anyone who curses his father or his mother, he shall surely be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother. His blood guiltiness is upon him. Yeah. So if God is loving and he forgives, why can't father or mother be forgiving as well? Why a son has to be put to death? Well, that's not only... Le Leviticus 20 verse 9. Let me make it harder for your son. Are you ready? Yes, sir. That's what I want. Make it harder. Go to Deuteronomy 21. 18 to 24. Yep. 18 I'm to 24. Already... So 21. you got that? Yes, sir. All right. So what does it say? Read Deuteronomy 21, 18 to 21. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother and who when they have chastened him yeah, chastened will not, that they've rebuked him to repent will not heed them then his father and his mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of the city to the gates of the city and they shall say to the elder of this city the son of our is stubborn and oh we got a dumb bastard hold on we got a dumb bastard Ilya, are you there you dumb little bastard he's not my brother number one you're misquoting scripture you dumb bastard that's not my brother, so I call him a bastard like you because you're so stupid. Jesus thought about your brother. He's not my brother. He's a false Christian who believes a false gospel. Let me deal with this dog. Are you ready? Sure, sir. Now, Eli, you son of the devil, can you read Matthew 5, 21 to 27? I should have wrote the whole text before sending it. No, I was like just writing this stuff so I could remember the questions to ask because my wife oh, told oh, me. If I came to you without writing them out, you were going to cuss me out. <laughs> no, you didn't need to write it because I thought you were saying that I called that guy a bastard because he's not no, my no, brother. No, no, It was just questions I was thinking when Jesus said. All right, now, okay. All right, man. So be, tell me, hey, bro, I got a question. I, thought you I know. Saying, hey, I, was, I was trying you know, to write hey, it out. Jesus said, don't call people raka, man. <laughs> All right, bro, I didn't know what the word meant. I was like, what does raka mean? Why didn't it raka translate? Raka means fool. It means to call someone fool, call someone stupid. So they said fool and then Raka, like, why did Raka, like, fool? you're stupid. You're like, hey, you fool, you stupid, stupid idiot. You I fool, you stupid, you idiot. 
like when I call Adam Seeker, you fool, you idiot. All right, well, deal with Adam Seeker. I'm going to be here. Yeah, I'll come back. Yeah, but thank you for setting me up and getting me animated while this man has a question for his son. Okay, and it's something well, I love you, you, Mr. Baldessirian. Okay. Thank you, sir. At least you got good taste. All right. All right. Sorry. So we read Deuteronomy 21, 18 and 20. I keep reading. Sorry, brother. Yeah, you know. 21, 21 is the important verse. Then all the men of his city shall stone him to death with stones. So yeah. you shall put away the evil from among you, and all the Israels shall well, hear and fear. Yes, you sir. put the evil among you. Why? Why is God having him cut off? It's not that God is cruel. If he's been given enough time to repent and turn, but he refuses and he keeps disrespecting, dishonoring his parents. It would be an act of injustice to allow such a man to be a burden on his parents and to oppress his parents. It's actually an act of mercy for the parents that someone who's so rebellious and hardened and opposes them and opposes God in doing so because he knows the rule of God. Such evil has to be cut off before it spreads and corrupts society. So how is it cruel when it's protecting parents from oppressive tyrants, children who are tyrants, who are burdened, who make the life of parents hell, no matter how many times they're told, repent, because then they're doing it willfully, defiantly, and they're not just defying the parents, they're defying God who warned them. And therefore, an example needs to be made out of them so that others will fear and not act corruptly and then corrupt society, which is what you're finding today with teenagers who don't get discipline. What are they doing to society? Pretty bad. So how is this cruel when it's an act of mercy to the parents and teaching others lesson? If you think you can be oppressive and tyrannical and oppress your parents, and harm your parents and be a burden to your parents and not repent, then you have a thing coming because you know better because God told you honor them and you've been warned, but you refuse. Now you need to be cut off from the land lest you keep oppressing them and burning them, which would be cruelty for them. But when you remove that oppression, it's now mercy for them because notice it got to the point they reported him to the judges, meaning they're fed up with him. True that. Did you understand? Who brought the rebellious son to the judges? The parents. parents. That means parents. the parents have reached a breaking point. They can't handle him anymore. The, his oppression is too much for them to tolerate. And they need help because they can't constrain him. For a parent to get to that point, to hand you over to the judges to be punished, that means you must be so oppressive and rebellious that they hate their life because of you. So it would be cruelty to allow them to endure that oppression. It's mercy for the parents to remove this cancer and then teach others to fear the Lord. This will happen to you if you do not act right. So in today's world, if I will translate it, so the moment when a parent is willing to call in the police on their son, it's that level. kind of a level. Yes. So it's that kind of a level. Because notice, if the parents take their son to the judges, they know they're asking judges to put him to death. What level must you reach to be so fed up with your child, you're wishing that he'd be dead than alive? Pretty high. So that's why if we read the Bible in context, this is mercy for the parents. So you want the parents who in their old age can't constrain him to continue to live under his oppression and misery as he terrorizes them? That kind of makes sense. I'll have a second Only chat kind with him. Only kind of. Yeah, it, it depends. You know, the kids nowadays bring up so That's many. Okay. I'm, I'm not here to convince kids. What I'm saying is this is the wisdom behind God showing mercy to parents who have an unruly son who's making their life hell and miserable. And he's being a terrorist, terrorizing them. And they're so sick of their life because of him that they now reach the breaking point. Bring him to the judges, meaning for them to get to that point, because they know he's going to be killed. That means mm -hmm. that's how evil and rebellious and unruly is. They're sick of him and living with him. You got to get to a breaking point to get it to that level. For sure. For sure. So Having kids, I, I do realize that to go to that level is right? almost impossible. Yes. And sadly, there have been children who have pushed parents to that level because of their evil, their oppression. Their tyranny, being like a terrorist, and destroying their lives, robbing them, 
you know, like drug addicts, if they're addicted, robbing their parents, beating their parents to get them to give money to support their habit. That happens a lot. That's I'm not just, it's not the Eric that happens. There are children who get to the point of addiction. They end up going and beating up their parents to steal their money or steal their property and rob them. They're living in hell and misery. And because there is no check and balance, they go and do it. And corruption spreads in society, which is why we got so much evil, so much tyranny in America today as we speak. You get my point? Yeah. So yeah. why is God saying, read that last part again. You read Deuteronomy 21, 18, 21. Read 21 again. 21 again. Yeah. Some even killed their parents. Exactly. You want to get to that point like our sister said. So if you understand God's wisdom, this is actually mercy for the parents and what they call a deterrent. Fear for others. Look, here's an example. You do this, you'll end up dead. So to constrain the evil hearts from acting on their evil. This is God's way of controlling the evil in your heart so you don't go crazy and ruly and spread evil because until you're born of the Spirit, until the Spirit captures your heart, you're prone to evil, and you see it in America. People are afraid to go to some cities because they're afraid they're going to get robbed and killed. And you see the drug addiction and the homelessness because this is what happens when you abandon God's rule and you think you're more compassionate than God and know better. All hell breaks loose on a society. Yeah. Read it on 21, 21 again. 21 again. Then all the men of his city shall stone him to death with stones. So you shall put away the evil from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. Do you see why? When Israel sees this boy, man, he's not a boy, by the way, kill, they will be afraid and think twice. Isn't it true? Let's use Islam as an example. And sadly, they have to use Islam. Because people in Saudi Arabia will have their hand chopped off if they steal, isn't it true? That you don't have high crime in Saudi Arabia, people stealing because of that? In Muslim countries, let's just generally, not even Saudi Arabia, where you came from. How many people would dare to steal if there was Islamic law implemented? Your hand gets cut off. Yeah, it will be difficult. Uh, but at the same time, there is they will they will cut the hands of a 12 years old as well. I'm not talking about the 12 year buddy. Listen to the logic yeah, before you. Oh, same time, man. Shut your pie hole, dude. I'm talking yeah. about because of the fear of having your hand cut off. Has that decreased <clears throat> stealing? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. How many people you knew got in Pakistan, stole and got away with it? Pakistan, they don't cut the hands. So there is a lot of stealing okay, over there. Okay, then don't forget Pakistan. Yeah. Saudi, that's why, see you, okay, that's why you Saudi Arabia, you little... Saudi Arabia, they'll cut your hand off because they try to follow Sharia. For now, anyway. Yeah. That's why I use that example. Okay. Einstein, don't make it more hard, harder for me before I shave your head. <laughs> get the point. Yeah, if I got the point. I got in the point. a Muslim land that's Sharia compliant, and they know mm. they'll cut your hand off, will that decrease yeah. the amount of stealing? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm trying to show you. I'm not saying Sharia is like the Old Testament. The Old Testament is superior to Sharia, but I'm giving you a principle. When people know that if you do something, you'll be punished, that puts the fear of God in them to constrain them from doing it. This is what God is saying here. I don't want my people to run amok and do what is right in their sight and then create chaos where they harm the innocent oppress the helpless who can't defend themselves and kill one another. So here's how you're going to do it until they get saved. Because until you're born of the spirit, until you're born of the spirit, yep, you have evil that you act upon here. People who, before they came to Christ in America, teenagers, young adults, doing drugs, getting drunk, having sex before marriage, abortion. Until if they do turn to Christ, get convicted and stop. Now, because of the Spirit, they don't do it anymore because of the love for Christ. So what God is saying, what do you do to people before they receive the Spirit or are born of the Spirit and love the Lord? How do you constrain them? You teach them, if we catch you doing this, you will be put to death. Got it. Right? Yep. If I were living in the Old Testament, do you think my ex-wife would commit adultery? Probably, or, or Most likely not. <laughs> you better believe not. She would have got stoned with the, the dogs that she committed adultery with. 
True if that. we're living in a Muslim country, you think these women like my would commit adultery? I'd commit adultery. If the Sharia is implementing, no. This is the wisdom of God giving you that. I've showed you that in First Timothy chapter one, five to ten. Did you remember that? The law is given yes. for evil doers. Yes. To constrain their evil, to teach them the fear that if you act on your evil, you will be removed from the land of the living. Until when you're born in spirit. That's why Paul says the law is for evildoers, not for us. What not do you mean? Because we who love the Lord, because of our love the Lord, we don't do here. Like what's stopping me from going and having sex with multiple women? Jesus. I can go right now, find someone to have sex. The law won't condemn me. The law won't punish me. So what's stopping me? Because I don't want to break Jesus's heart. I want to love him. I don't love him enough. It's the love of Jesus that says to me, no, don't do that. But yeah, until that was... I'm the love of Jesus, what do I do to constrain people from being whores, from having sex before marriage, and then when they get pregnant, murdering the child? Well, that's why you have the Old Testament system. But when you don't follow that kind of system, that's why you have now adultery going out of style, fornication, like it's no, in fact, multiple partners. And one proof of it. I recommend everyone watch Paternity Court. It's on YouTube. It is the most heartbreaking series. It's an actual judge who has to give DNA tests to actual people, Paternity Court, because they don't know who the father is because they've slept with so many men. And then hmm. you see the heartbreak of the children. Grown women saying, I don't know who my father is because my mother had sex with multiple people and she doesn't know who my father is. That's the society you produce without the law saying, hey, you have sex before marriage. You're going to marry that person, no divorce. Or if you commit adultery, you'll be put to death and be killed. And that then lessens, reduces the evil of hearts, the hearts of men until they're born of spirit. Now, in America, you can commit adultery. And I want to be labor to I'm trying to hammer this point. You can have multiple sexual partners no one's going to condemn you but why don't we do it because why of... don't we try to be a player in a gigolo and go on these sites and find multiple women and have sex with them because the law is not going to punish me because i want to love jesus and honor him i don't love him enough and i don't want to do that it's not because i'm afraid i'll be killed no one's going to kill me meaning the law but it will break jesus's heart and it's not even the fear of judgment. It's I don't want to break his heart. So coming back to the issue, Deuteronomy 21, 21 says why this needs to be done. When you put an unruly son who has been such a terror to his parents to death because now they're at the point they despair of life and they'd rather have him dead than alive, that will send a message to other children. This will happen to you. You better fear and honor your parents. There you go. No, thank you so very much. This side discussion is will also also going to help me a lot. So appreciate it. Yes, and connecting it to First Timothy chapter number two, eleven, twelve, thirteen one, was also one, verse one, five, one. Okay, not two, five. Yeah, it was it was also very 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 great. So yeah, thank you, thank you. That's so it's not uh, cruelty. Tell him, son, hold on. Let's read it. Isn't this mercy for the parents who are being abused and terrorized against a child that's too strong for them to resist? I, I got it. I got it. And secondly, because like the things that you brought up is very important because when I was a Muslim slash just left Islam, it was for me very difficult to comprehend that when you have a salvation in believing Christ, what is stopping you for committing sin because you do not have punishment. So for me to comprehend this basic point took a long time. So yeah. I, I, this is my own testimony that it took me a long time to comprehend because coming from Islam, everything it has a punishment attached to it and everything can get you to hell for a certain period of time. And hence, for me, it was really, really difficult to comprehend. Hey, you already have a salvation. What's stopping you to do any sin? Right. Yeah. So and yeah, so it took. Yeah, I, 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 I got it. Yeah, I want you to read. Read Second Corinthians 5, 14 to 16 for me. Pay attention to verse 14. Second Corinthians 5, 14 and 16. So you get it now, right? You understand the logic, the wisdom. See, if you take a step of faith and say, Lord, you're infinitely wiser than me. I cannot comprehend your infinite mind. I'm weak, I'm weak wicked, imperfect, limited. So I'm going to trust your wisdom that there is something good in these commands. And if you walk by faith, then he'll reward you by opening your mind. And then you're going to say, oh, wow, now I see. 
But if you come already thinking you know better than God or questioning these commands from God, then he hands you over. All right, believe what you want. Got it. Got right. it. Second now, Corinthians 5. now watch this principle that once you're born of the Spirit and you submit to the Spirit, your love for Jesus is what hinders you. That's why when you do sin as a Christian, you're broken. You're broken. Okay. Why did I hurt you, Lord? Please forgive me, Lord. I'm weak. Second Corinthians 5, 14 to 16. Notice verse 14. I'm going to go off camera. 14. For the love of Christ compels us. That's it. We... What compels me? What forces me not to sin and do the things I, I do? The love of Christ. Not the, the of fear Christ. of God's wrath. Not God's judgment and threats. Because Jesus loves me with an infinite love and so perfectly, his love melts me and makes me do his will. Did you catch Beautiful, it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So there. we read it one more time, brother. For the love of Christ compels us because wow. we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. See? And Keep reading. Absolutely. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died, ah. for them are rose again. Do you see the beauty? His That's love true. compels me and makes me want to die to myself in the world because he loved me so much to die for me. That love is so great, it melts me and breaks me and makes me want to die to myself in the world and live for him. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense. That's Absolutely. the difference between someone who's not born from above and in love with him and someone who is. Someone who's not needs threats. You you murder, you'll be put to death. You steal, you're going to be thrown in jail. You commit adultery, you'll be put to death. Once you're born of spirit, you don't need those threats anymore. Absolutely. Right? Got it. Got it. Make Absolutely. Sense. What's your second question, sir? Yes, the second question is very simple for you, probably. Yeah, uh, the New Testament says God allowed certain things in the past because of the harden of your hearts. Yep, that's right? Matthew 19. We were reading that last time. Exactly. Uh, now the question here is: Then how come God gave clean, unclean food, restriction of diets, restriction of clothing, and each and everything, 613 commands, which yeah. goes into very minute details of yes. how people have lived their life. So at one point, he relaxed the people of Israel mm -hmm. and even allowed them to have multiple wives and yeah. certain things which we do not approve of at this time. Yet, on another side, he restricted them so much that it's like a sheep in 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 a cage kind of a yeah. thing. You're confused, dude. I'm the, confused. The definitely. statement assumes that if God for, prevents me from eating certain food, certain food, that is a burden. Why? Why is restrict me from certain food of burden? It's just like telling me that Adam and Eve they're allowed to eat of every tree in the garden, but because yeah. of that one tree, God forbade them. That was a burden. If God completely cut off all food that I can understand. Or if God commanded me to eat only tasteless food that makes me miserable to eat, I can understand. The assumption is that these foods that he restricted, they are of such nature that he's robbing them of pleasure because the other foods won't be as tasty. How's that a burden? That's just one point. How's that a burden? Number one, right? Number two, if you actually follow the list of the animals that God and the birds that God and the, sea, the marine life that God forbade you to eat, it all serves a health benefit. Are you aware that all the things he forbidden are animals that prey off of filth that if you eat will then damage your body? So if you actually follow the laws, the foods that you eat, no fat in it, no blood in it, certain animals that don't prey on filth. Like, for example, one thing forbidden, you cannot eat eagles or hawks and rats. Why? Because eagles and hawks, they eat filth. They eat dirty animals. They're contaminated. So eating them will contaminate your body and make you healthier. I mean, un unhealthy. unhealthy. Yeah. Moreover, there are certain animals in the sea, like catfish or shrimp, shrimp especially. They eat the garbage, the debris of the ocean. So the shrimp are used to clean up the ocean of the filth. 
When I eat shrimp, I'm eating the filth that the shrimp ate, and it's now affecting my body. But I love shrimps, brother. Yeah, I know. Me too. Because now what Paul says, okay, you want to eat? Go ahead. You want to die younger and go to be with Jesus? Go ahead. But you get my point? Even fat, it says you are not to eat the fat. Ask any heart doctor, cardiovascular surgeon. Fat is a leading contributor to heart disease. So actually, if you look at it, because God said, if you keep my commands, I will keep you healthy and I will keep you disease free. So the diseases that fell on Egypt won't fall on you. He says that. Exodus 15, 26. Hold on. Read Exodus it. 15. Hold on. Yes. So there is actually a health benefit in following those commands. Here. So God in his wisdom, he there's multiple reasons why he's restricting these foods. One is those foods will destroy you, damage you internally, your organs, your health, will lead to cancer, diabetes, right, heart diseases, you name it. That's number one. So there's a health benefit. And even God says, one benefit from keeping my commands, I will prevent you from experiencing the diseases, the plagues that fell on Egypt. What does Exodus 15, 26 say? 26, okay, 26. Yeah. Uh, it says, and said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you, which Catch I have it? brought on Egypt. Got it. My commands are meant to produce health and longevity and a healthy quality of life. He told you. So where's the burden? He's caring for you. He's telling you, if you keep my commands, I will keep you healthy so you don't get sick and diseased. How's that a burden, brother? Mm. That makes sense. Then then now the question arises, and that's my question, not somebody else, because this question was asked by an ex-Muslim to me, yeah. and I'm asking you. But now this is my question. Then why did God allow it in the New Testament? Well, because now you are free to eat what you want, but it doesn't mean you should, because he now wants to teach you the spiritual application, because now this was the second point that I was getting to. So in the New Testament, you can still keep, the dietary restrictions for health reasons. Keep that in mind. So he's asking me a question. All right, well, why did God free me as a Gentile? Very simply. Though God is saying, I give you the commands so you don't get sick and diseased, that's not the entire purpose. You're going to die anyway. There's a greater meaning behind these restrictions. And now with Christ, you're going to see and you're going to get blown away. So you can still keep those commands for health reasons. But God is saying, you're free. You don't have to, but you can. And you should if you want to get healthier. So you can if you want to get healthier. But the real reason behind these commands, because there is one level that's physical, material, a blessing physically, a blessing materially, like bless the land, plenty of fruit, vegetables, healthy bodies, plenty of children. That's the physical blessing. But every command is meant to point to a greater spiritual truth. Now, let me tell you the truth it points to, that now in Christ, why you're free now, to do it or not. Are you aware that the clean and unclean was meant to distinguish God's people being made clean and the nations who are unclean in their impurity and sin? And their impurity in sin. Their impurities and sin, meaning they were impure because of their lifestyle. And because of that, they're in sin. Did you know that? No. You should know that because Peter's vision in Acts 10, 9 to 16, when he ah. saw the table spread, ah, the light switch went on. Three <laughs> times, clean and unclean animals and birds. And God said, get up, kill, and eat. I've never eaten anything clean. And God said, do not call unclean or common what God has made clean. And then Peter realized later, God was showing me that the Gentiles are clean, and I shouldn't call them unclean anymore. Acts 10, 28. That's how Peter interprets it. So you understand behind the clean, unclean animals pointing to the Israel as God's people who are set apart to be spiritually pure from the nations who are spiritually unclean and defiled because of their paganism and morality. But now in Christ, the Gentiles are being cleansed, so that division doesn't exist. That's the point of releasing or relaxing that command. Uh, please repeat your last sentence. And because the Gentiles are what? Say it again. 
I'll bust said, your face if you're not listening, dude. No, please. I will have to remind you because I was typing and re re referencing. Uh, if Peter told you the unclean animals represent mm -hmm. the Gentiles, so why did God say kill and eat everything? Because God was showing Peter the Gentiles are now going to be clean like you and one with you, so do not discriminate because they're one in Christ. Ah, uh, okay, because of that. Okay, okay. okay Acts okay, 10, 28. That's why I yeah, said keep reading it. When Peter yeah. goes to Cornelius' home, read from Acts 10. 9 to 28. Well, read 26 to 29. Okay. 26, 29. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up. I myself am also a man. And as he talked with him, I he said went 26 in. to 29. Thank you, you read it, because that was 26, um, sir. I should have had to read 25, dude. It's okay, man. It's actually, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Then he said to them, you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man See? to keep company. It's unlawful for us to come in contact with Gentiles in their home because you're unclean. You're going to make us unclean. Mm -hmm. So what does he say? Jewish man to keep company with or go to one another, uh, one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should, should not call any man common or unclean when did he show him that because the vision right. was animals when did he show him that that you peter do not call anything unclean before the rapture dude i'm thinking not to say anything wrong because call, uh, the because same this, chapter, more yeah often. because the, because the, because the roman guy was calling him up right that no because of what did peter see dude i just explained it more off i love you more off not more on because i want more of you lose weight yeah i just told you what did peter see in acts 10 the unclean animals that and clean was... animals in a vision three times right yes and then i just told in acts 10 9 to 17 which is the context of what you're reading yes, when peter sir. said i haven't eaten anything clean god said do not call common unclean what god has made clean but he's talking Absolutely. about the animals. But then Peter realized, no, the animals represent humans. Humans. Got it. So why was it released? To show you that Gentiles are not unclean anymore. They are one with Israel through faith in Jesus. So don't make a distinction and do not discriminate. Got it. So you see the wisdom? The health benefits are there, but it's more than that. So does that mean because I'm freed from it, it's not an obligation for me to keep it to show that I'm faithful to the Lord, that I shouldn't eat these. No, you can still do that for health reasons. But it's when you say you got to keep these laws, otherwise you're not faithful to Christ. That's what the New Testament condemns. But no mm -hmm. one is stopping someone from being a vegan. You can be a vegetarian. No one's stopping someone from not eating pork or camel meat or shrimp. You can still follow those because now you see a wisdom all the prohibited animals and birds and marine life, they will cause you to get sick and disease. So if you don't eat them, you'll be healthier, especially when God says, do not eat the fat or the blood. Exactly, because the blood transmits diseases. See the wisdom of God? Sense. It was more than that. So I don't know if that answered your question. It did. It did. It did. Answer but, but the way you're saying it's like you're not happy. I don't care if you're happy. It did. No, it did. I'm not. It's not about. Come on. I don't want to hear you because you're going to make me unclean, brother. Go ahead. <laughs> no. Thank you so much. That, that's it. That's uh, that's it. And it it does make sense. And thank you. Yes. So Appreciate you sure you got your answers? Is okay? Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. God bless you. Especially the part of the law. And you understand why we Christians who love Jesus, we don't need the threat of the law to constrain us because what did Paul say? The love of Jesus, love his love Jesus. for me and dying for me makes me want to die to myself in the world and live for him. Absolutely, brother. There God you go, bless sir. you always. Thank you so God much. And your last session was awesome as well. Thank you. And it was you like can, that Q&A. You can keep doing your stream Saturday or do and get 10,000 and make millions. And I hear panhandle. Just take the knowledge that the spirits give me to give you and become famous while I'm nobody, you little sinner. No, brother. I'm using your knowledge a lot. That's Trust what I'm me. saying. You take this information, share it, and you go viral, and I still struggle here. Feed me. I work for food. Get out of here, man. <laughs> take care. God bless you, man. And I wish someday it will be 10,000 as well. Take care. In Jesus' name. For his glory, not for Amen. our praise. Amen. Amen. You shave your head. I will Did try to. No, please. I'll try. Bye. Yeshua.
Akbar al Azim. Akbir. Thank you. You didn't even say Al Masih Akbar. Yes, sir. Follower of the way. How can I help you? Hey, Sam. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah. Um. I I want okay. you if you could uh, help me understand a passage, understand I a verse. Know. Maybe I can. Maybe. Uh, Isaiah twenty-four, twenty-one. Yes, it says that flowers in the heavens and on the earth. Yeah, what about it? Yeah, I was trying to understand what exactly are these powers of the heavens. Is this talking about like demonic demons, realm. the demonic realm? But read the verse so people know what you're talking about, because I know what you're referring to, but the people don't know what you're talking about. Isaiah twenty four twenty one. Yeah, it, it will come to pass in that day that Jehovah will punish the army of the heavens on high, and the kings of the earth on over the earth. Okay, did you guys catch it? Isaiah says the day will come, God will destroy the powers in heaven, armies of heaven on high, and the rulers on earth. Why? Because according to the Bible, my brother, I need you to listen, everyone. The ones that rule the earth are spirit creatures, fallen, rebellious, angelic creatures who use human authorities to work through to destroy the earth. So when you look to Biden... It's not just Biden. There's a spirit working through Biden and influencing Biden because the humans are the tools and the puppets of the spirit rulers, the demonic rulers who are working through human governments to bring destruction on earth until God disarms them and throws them in hell. Let me prove that to you. You ready? Yeah. Go to Ephesians 6.12. Ephesians 6.12. Are you guys learning as he goes there the beauty, the majesty, the depth of scripture when the spirit illuminates you to see the wisdom behind these commands and how they all point to a spiritual fulfillment in Jesus? I hope you guys are appreciating it. But you need to pray for me, everyone. This wisdom is not for me. It's from the Holy Spirit and I'm not worthy of it. But in his mercy and love, he's given it to me so I can give to you. Pray God seal me and I glorify Jesus unto death and never shame Jesus. I need sir, brother, could you repeat the passage from Ephesians? Sir, did you cut me off as I was speaking? I was speaking, you cut me off? Oh, sorry, sorry, sir, brother. You cut me off as I'm trying to make a point? Did you just cut? I'm just kidding. Go ahead, read Ephesians 6.12. Don't be scared, brother. 6.12. Thank you, thank you. God, shake it. No, please don't laugh. I need to answer to my question. Okay. For we do not have struggle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the governors of the darkness of this uh, time or age, against spiritual hosts of evil in the uh, celestial regions. Okay, you catch it. Your translation is bad, but it's okay. You caught it? So who are we fighting against? The demonic realm, the rulers that rule from heaven, right? Yeah, right. What translation are you reading? Because that was a bad translation, brother. Yeah, I was just trying to translate it on the fly because I, oh, I have oh, only a Bible in Spanish. I kiss your head, bro. You're good. It's all right. You did good. But you got it now, right? That's the answer. Yeah. I, funny thing is, like, uh, the rabbis try to deny that demons exist, but then you have that verse in Isaiah saying Not only Isaiah, totally the opposite. You, Isaiah, buddy. you want me to show you where the Bible talks about demons in their Bible, sir? Yeah, that would be fantastic. Go to Deuteronomy 32, 16 and 17, sir. Why are you dealing with rabbis? What are they saying to you? Well, I don't know. That's kind of the that's that's the thing I'm kind of interested with. Oh, so you have a hard to reach Jews. All right, but be prepared because you got to know your Bible. Baruch Hashem, yep. sir. Do you say Baruch Hashem? Uh, I know what it means, but I, uh, uh, I don't uh, really say that. Shalom, Chavarim, Shalom. Go ahead. Read Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32, 32 16. 16 17. So it says, um, they rose his jealousy with foreign gods. They provoked him to anger with abominations. They sacrificed to demons and not to God. Demons? To, right, right. Demons? That's right. Wow, I cannot believe this. I can't believe it, brother. 
So they mentioned the foreign gods, the gods of the peoples are demons. That's but right. Yeah. Okay, now let me give you two more. You ready? Yep. Psalm 106, 36 to 37. Psalm 106, 36 to 37. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom. Guys, don't leave. I know you're waiting, but this is the nature of taking calls. I know you're there, Joshua Drake, my homie from Wyoming. And right, they served their idols, the those which were the cause of their ruin. They sacrificed their sons and daughters to the demons. Demons? That's right. <laughs> Darn! I the can't believe this. Them. Okay, now let me give you another one. In Daniel chapter yep. 10, you're going to read 13, but I'm going to give you the context. So if you go to Daniel chapter 10, here Daniel is told by the angel he was stopped from reaching Daniel for 21 days because of the ruler of Persia. Stopped him for 21 days. So Michael had to come and help him. So when you go to Daniel 10, let me know and then read verse 13 for me. Yep, it says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me during or opposed for me days. for 21 days yeah but and then who had to but help low michael, michael right. one of the prince princes of the main princes came to help me and i stayed there with the kings of persia let me ask you a question this is a spirit creature that humans cannot see unless he appears visibly right right but he says daniel when you prayed god heard you when I tried to come to answer you, the ruler of Persia stopped me. So he resisted me for 21 days we were fighting. What ruler of Persia would be able to see an angel come and resist him? Yeah, that wouldn't make sense if it was material. Like So it's a spirit creature, right? Right. And the spirit creature is the real ruler who uses the ru human ruler as his puppet, right? Right. There you it go. It wouldn't make sense otherwise. Yep. Exactly. And then read same chapter 20 to 21. 20 to 21. It says, he told me, do you know why I have come to you? Uh, well, now I have to go back to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I've, I'm done with him, the prince of Greece will come. But I will declare to you what is written in the book of the truth. And no one helps me against them but Michael your prince okay can i ask you a question not only will he fight the prince of persia but then the prince of greece will come and they're going to have to fight him and michael's going to help him who are these rulers of persia and greece that can actually fight spirit creatures like michael and this angel not humans right yeah it couldn't be it can't be so what you just saw is proof from the old testament there are demons fallen angels Rebellious spirit creatures who are ruling through human governments and using human kings as their instrument. There you go. End of story. Yeah. They deny they deny them because they have them in the back of their necks so they can see it. So they right can see there. It. Just go to Daniel 10. Yep. So explain this to me, buddy. Yep. Explain it to me. You can't tell me. Thank it's you so much, Sam. And I'll thank Jesus for the wisdom he's given us. So you pray for me that I stay holy because that's how you're going to thank me. Right, brother? Any other questions? Right. That, that was it, basically. Thank, thank you, sir. God bless you. Did you cut me off, sir? Shalom, Chavarim. What's up, Joshua? Not much. Hello, hello Hogan. How you What's doing? Hello, hello. So, hey, exit JW Laura. You'll be next, sister. Don't go anywhere. I got to bring you on for an interview. Don't leave anywhere. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So, I have a few questions. Uh, one is kind of uh, just piggybacking off what the other guy. Joshua, did you just tell me to block that dude, man? You a man after my heart. You man, you pierced. <laughs> I know you've been working out a lot, so you you know you're ready to pump and hit that block button. Well, you know what? So. <laughs> I pray I stay disciplined, man, because it's been three weeks okay. and I'm enjoying it, and I don't get in vain about it because you're so mm -hmm. vain. But what's your question? Go ahead. Okay, so my one question would be about the uh, clean and unclean things, and That's I know fair, you bro. went into detail for that one. But uh, let me see, let me get on the camera a little bit, and uh, so. So would that be the uh, reason why uh, people from Islam or Muslims don't shake our hands or don't yes. greet us? Yes. That would be the reason why, because they consider us unclean. unclean yeah. and I'll give you the verse of the Quran. 
I'll give you the verse in the Quran. Chapter 9, verse 28. Chapter 9, the Quran 28 says, the disbelievers, which includes Jews and Christians, are unclean. Nejis. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a very strong word. Oh, they call us nudges. That's why when God's logic was with Juicy Usman, uh, yeah. he he was uh, Smollett. He was Jeff saying Morton. he was saying nudges. Yeah, That's Juicy, right. Morton, Juicy, right? Juicy Usman Smollett. That's my nickname for him. All right. So uh, so the next question is uh, kind of off of uh, your stream earlier. I hope this doesn't upset you. I don't get blocked for it, but. Uh, so it's Matthew 16 to 18, 16. Yeah, yeah Matthew 16. 16. My question is for you. So uh, from my, my understanding and what I've learned uh, right. from, the back, from the past, from not my own understanding, but what I've been taught, right? Yes. Because uh, I, I'm, I'm, I grew up in the Assembly of God Church and now I'm going to a, a, uh, yeah, now I'm going to a non-denominational. So is it about the, the word rock? It's about the word rock, but not only is that, it's the the keys as well, because uh, from what I was told that Christians, as Christians, we have the keys to the kingdom to allow, you know, other people through, you know, through God's word, um, but also the rock. Yeah, it's about the rock. So which part of the verse, because in Matthew 16, 16, mm -hmm. Jesus says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, bar Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father in heaven. And then 17 says, I tell you, you are. Kepha or Greek Petros, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates okay. of Hades will not prevail against it. And then 19 says, And I'll give to you the keys of the kingdom, and what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, what you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So, which part mm -hmm. do you want me to answer? So, my question is about uh, the rock specifically. Who's the who rock? Is the, who is the rock? That's so what I want to know. Who's the, the rock? Is the rock is a former WWE wrestler and an actor. <laughs> It doesn't matter who the rock is. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but no, who the who is the rock? Because in, in this context, in this part it matters. In this sense, it matters. I think. In that context, Peter is the rock that Jesus builds his church on, because okay. we know he's talking to Peter. Because mm -hmm. if you pay attention, I want you to pay attention. He's asking me who the rock is. If you read Matthew 16, Jesus says, "Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah." But literally. The word son is in Aramaic. It's bar Jonas. So if you have mm -hmm. the King James, it will tell you Simon bar Jonah. So okay. Jesus is speaking Aramaic to him. Are you with me there? Guys, mm -hmm. listen today. Answer this question. Who's the rock? That's why I changed my position because of bad. Okay. Stuff. And I was going to ask you that before too. What was your position before? Yeah, yeah I was going to ask Peter, you. The rock is Jesus Christ. It's not mm -hmm. either or. It's all of the above. It's Jesus with the apostles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. I'm going to prove to you okay, that Jesus I like that answer. You got to focus with me, though. But what Bible are you reading? What'd you say? I'm sorry. What'd you say? I just pulled it. I'm at my uncle's house, house sitting for him for a little while. So I got two dogs right now. But I'm reading a um, a gospel transformation Bible, English Standard Version. If you have a King James, will capture. But hey, let me tell you what it says. It says, blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah. The word son mm -hmm is bar aramaic that means jesus is speaking aramaic right it does have that oh, it yeah, does have bar. Okay, now let me tell you why mm -hmm. that's important focus me you listening i'm gonna tell you why that's important mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. if jesus is speaking in aramaic the word for rock is kepha so he would have said in aramaic you are kepha and on this kepha i will build my church okay. that means people hearing him would understand peter is the rock because he just said, you are Kepha, and on this Kepha, I'll build my church. There's no way of mm -hmm. getting around it. If you take into context, this is spoken in Aramaic. And further proof that Jesus would have been talking to Peter and saying, you are Kepha, and on this Kepha, you, Kepha, I'll build my church. In mm -hmm. John 142, John even tells you that Jesus <laughs> called Peter Kepha, because he gives it to you in Greek, Cephas. John 142. Thank the Holy Spirit, Ethel. And if you love me for the sake of Jesus, you're going to pray the Holy Spirit, save me from myself, and empower me to love Jesus Christ with perfect love, even unto death, until he summons me. I never shame the Lord, because I'm weak without him. I really am. All right, and John 142, mm -hmm. what does it say? Uh, he brought 
He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas. Cephas. And then what does John say in 42? 43. The next no, day, Jesus. Doesn't John translate it for you or he doesn't? Cephas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Which means Peter. So notice, John just told you, Jesus said in Aramaic. Guys, follow this. Jesus said him in Aramaic. He said, Kepha. In Greek, it's transliterated as Cephas. Mm -hmm. So reread John 142 one more time so everyone gets it. Okay. All right. Uh, he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. Okay. Now let me break it down. That means the word Cephas, that's not a Greek word. It's a loan word taken from Aramaic. That means here John is telling you, Jesus said this in Aramaic. So in Aramaic, he said, you are Kepha, Greek, mm -hmm. Cephas. But then he tells you the Greek word for Cephas. The mm -hmm. Greek word for Cephas is Patros. So that's why we call him Patros, Peter, because Patros is the Greek word for rock, even though Jesus called him Kepha, the Aramaic word for rock. So in Aramaic, he's Kepha, 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 mm -hmm. rock. But in Greek, that would be Patros, masculine. Okay. So Petros. what am I getting at? If you're going to let the Bible speak, in Aramaic, Jesus said to Peter, you are Kepha, and upon this Kepha, I'll build my church. There's no way of getting around it. He's talking to Peter. Okay. So, but I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I did hear you say that it is both, but in this instant, he's talking to Peter. Yeah, because it's not just Peter. Peter mm. is given a primacy, a role as head of the apostles, but the same Bible says that Jesus is the rock, and in union with Christ, Peter's the rock, and in union with Peter, they all become the rock. Because in Ephesians 2.20, we're told the foundation of the church is not just Peter, but the mm -hmm. apostles and the holy prophets. Ephesians Oh, look at that. Open it right up to it, too. Ephesians 2.20. 2.20. I like this, man. Thank you. Uh, all right, 2.20. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. I was thinking that. So yeah, the yeah. foundation of the building, the rock upon which you build the church, is mm -hmm. Peter in union with the apostles and the prophets. Okay. But they are the rock in union with Christ who keeps the building together. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Okay. All right. Is that it, brother? You Sounds good. More? I mean, I had another one, but yeah, I'm pretty it? sure. Answer well, the other one, it sounds like you already answered that because my, ne uh, my next question was, uh, you know, the ancient Catholic Church is that the Catholic Church of today. But Don't forget, like... Orthodox and Catholic all use the term Catholic. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get it, but I'm, I'm specifically talking about the one that, uh, yeah. like, the, nation, the, the nations. Well, let right? me tell you what the ancient Catholic Church would have looked like. If you read church history, the ancient Catholic Church believed in, let me just tell you, Mm -hmm. This is easily demonstrably, you can prove that just studying. That's why I changed my position. They believed in infant baptism. You baptize infants. And that water baptism was used by the Spirit to bring about your unity with Christ. So you're one with Christ in the Spirit, which then results mm -hmm. in you being forgiven and made alive. Right? They also believe the Eucharist becomes the body and blood of Christ. It's not just symbolic. They also believe Mary was a perpetual virgin, kept all pure. They also believe that the saints are alive, and by the Spirit, they're made aware of what's taking place on earth. And therefore, when you ask them, they can pray for you. They also pray, they also believe you can pray for the dead, that God will give them an increase of peace. So they believe in things that Protestants, for the most part, reject. But these are the right. things that you'll find in these ancient churches the Orthodox Church, the Catholic Church, the Syrian Church. Now, that doesn't mm -hmm. mean in time they don't develop because. Okay. They Time, everyone develops. Now, the question is, as time goes by and things change and develop because we encounter new challenges to our faith, like AI, what should we do about AI? These are mm. things that the church 2,000 years ago didn't contend, so the church today has to deal with them. So right. as time goes by, new situations arise, the church is forced to deal with them and to come up with understanding and teachings to address those mm -hmm. issues. So the debate becomes, which church has been able to develop 
a correct progression, progression, right? A correct understanding from what came before, because you either mm -hmm. will develop from the foundation and your development will be faithful to the foundation and it will not contradict the foundation, or you're going to start developing doctrines that contradict the foundation. Right. I got so many questions. <laughs> Just so, off of that, like you just bring up stuff like, uh, for instance, the perpetual virgin. Like, of yep, course, he had brothers. Ancient. Yeah, but he had he had family. He had you family. So you think okay. they are his brothers? That's not what the church said. They are his brothers oh. because they were <clears throat> related to him, but not from Mary. Okay. okay. So that's the debate. How did the church that Jesus established? by the Holy Spirit working through the apostles, interpret mm -hmm. the very Bible that they copied, they preserved, they taught, which you're now reading, how to understand the brothers of Christ. They all believe mm -hmm. these were not his brothers from Mary. Okay. It's one thing when you read the Bible, but you're going to have to ask your, yourself this question. This Bible did not come down from heaven in mm -hmm. one volume. This Bible was a set of books that men wrote by inspiration of the Holy Spirit and they didn't collect in one volume, so Christians were preserving those copies and then copying them and recopying them so they wouldn't lose those books. So then you're going to have to ask your question, who are those Christians? And when they copied these books and preserved them for us today, how do they understand these verses? So when I look mm -hmm. to that church established by the apostles who are given these books that you're reading now, they read Mark 6, 3, Jesus' brothers, not his brothers from Mary. So right. now either they all got it wrong and they were mistaken and we get it right later or we're misreading those verses because the church that was given that Bible knew the interpretation and knew what it meant. That's your only two choices. Right. So only okay. two choices. As right. for me and my household, I will go with the ancient church who knew the apostles, right. were appointed by the apostles, who then appointed people after them and how they saw these passages. Right. I do, I do want to ask you about like, uh, you know, atheists use this point of contention and stuff, and they say, oh, it's like a problem of evil and suffering, right? But uh, like, quickly, I wanted to I, ask you. Real quickly, hmm? this is no, it's fine. But yeah, yeah, no, no, I got you, I got you. I, I'll let you go then. We can talk. Here's before you real quickly say, when you say something is evil, you're assuming a standard, a standard right. to determine right and wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if there is no God, think about it, then there's, there's no nothing absolute. Everything is something based on your experience and feeling. So I feel this is wrong, but I'm not God, and I can be mistaken because I can feel something's wrong and you feel it's right. Mm -hmm. So if you think something's right and I think it's wrong, how can we then determine which of us is right, which of us is wrong, if there isn't a standard that exists that's absolutely solid, unchangeable, Objective. that no matter what remains the same to determine whether I'm right or you're wrong. Well, if you have no mm -hmm. God, there's no such standard. And if right. there's no such standard, then you can never tell me definitively this is evil because what you call evil, someone else will call good. All right. One more thing. So it's my thing. When God made the standard, now there's an opposite standard from the same. beginning. Yes, like it never had it never had to be created by God. God made a standard, so there's the opposite God standard. Made the standard. The moral code is a reflection of God's character. God, right, which is eternal, is a morally perfect being. He is mm -hmm. more moral. He is morality. He is nice. a morally perfect being. So the law is a reflection of this eternal reality, who's eternally perfect, righteous, good, and loving, and cannot be otherwise. It is okay. a reflection. Mm -hmm. All right, so that, cool. hopefully, I appreciate you saying, man. You, 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 get you know, you know, you know, I'll be back. I'm putting it all time now. Thanks for the warning, bro. That's right, all baby. Right. <laughs> right. We'll talk. All right, bye. All right, guys, there you go. We got a few more callers. We'll be done. A few more. Oh, oh man, I rocked up the wrong guy. Here, let me go to XJ. I don't know if it's her. Hold on, let me see. I think it's probably a troll pretending to be her. Sorry, man. I'm going to have to do this. So you can come back. Hold on, buddy. You're going to have to come back. Come back on. Is that you, XJW Laura? Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? It is you. Okay, I got scared. I thought you were a troll. Sorry. 
<laughs> now, in the upcoming week or two, I want to bring you on to share your testimony. Now, I'm, uh, okay, awesome. The reason why I have to be cautious because there are people who use names of people on my channel only to flash yeah. pornographic images. So that's why I have to be cautious. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. I promise. <laughs> So I kind of, I just have a really simple question on grammar in the Bible. Um, you know, the Jehovah's Witness, they have their own interlinear Bible. Yes. And in John 1, 1, they agree that it's um, Theon, Chi, Theos, but or, they, yes. low, Theon. they, Theon and Chi, Theos, yes. but they lowercase it. Is yes. that gr grammatically correct? Like, can they do that? Have you ever seen Theos lowercased in your study of the Bible? Yeah. Let, let me ask, let me repeat what you're saying. In John 1, okay. 1, so they can understand what you're asking me. She's an ex-JW. She witnesses to Joe's witnesses, her and her husband. So pray for them. She has a YouTube channel, by the way. Go there and watch the stuff. Support people who are witnessing to the cults to bring them to the truth. In John 1, 1, the Joe Witness Bible and their current updated version will say, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was a God, lowercase g. So let me get you their translation online. One second. Hope you guys are enjoying these sessions. Because I'm old and I'm getting tired, I'm getting fried. But if the Holy Spirit gives me the power and the health, I'll keep doing this. I'm an old dude. I'm going to be 51 if God wills. Anyway, oh, I went to the wrong one. Darn you, JW. Here it is. JW.org. Here is their site where you can read all their Bibles online for free. Here it is, guys. Right there. Let me show you their translation, how it reads. Here I'm going to be using the Read the Bible Online. Read the Bible online. Just want to show you where you can find their Bible online for free. Here it is. And I'm going to go to John 1.1. 1, 1. I won't give you links. I'll just give you the verse. All right. John 1.1. 1, 1. And what the debate is. It's going to get a little technical. I've done series on this, by the way. Look on my channel. John 1.1.18 1, 1, made easy. Put John okay. and 1 and see what comes up. But I'm going to try to answer the best I can. Here's John 1.1. 1, 1. In fact, here, maybe they can read it for us. Listen. Listen. <laughs> Did you hear it? One more time. And I'll put the verse. Oh, you guys can't hear it, right? Sorry. My apologies, I can't hear it. You guys can't hear, it, right? I'm sorry, because I have to do it on the other one. Why don't you shut up, mister? You guys couldn't hear that, right? No. So here's the verse. Hey, God, you heard it, right? Or you didn't hear it? I didn't hear it. Okay. Sorry. Let me go here. They're so state of the art in their technology. They spend so much money on giving you the sleekest, you know, the best product they have on their site where you can have someone reading the chapters for you. Here it is. Listen. Now, I put it on the screen, A God, lowercase g. But now listen. The good news according to John. Chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. The Word was a God. The well, good news according to John. Listen. Chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the word was with God. And the word was a God. Ah, oh God. Ah, oh God. Oh, man. There you go. Okay, so what she's asking me is this. So you heard it, right? What she's asking me is, is there any justification for rendering the word theos as a God? This is the argument. Okay. Try not to make it too technical. May the Spirit enable me. To recall the facts of grammar, because I suck in grammar. I had to learn this the hard way. Okay, in the Greek it says, the word was with, pay attention, ton theon, ton theon, ton theon, okay? The word was with ton theon or ton theon, okay? What's ton theon mean? It means be God, be God. So the word was, the word was with the God. Now, if you pay attention, there you have before the word God, the definite article. Ton is the definite article, the. So it doesn't simply say the word was with God. It says the word was with the God. But then 
And the third line, it says, okay, I'm going to go by memory. Okay. NRK, logos K, okay, all right. In the third line, it says, Kai, Theos, Theos, Ain, Hologos. Here it is on screen. Hold on. Buddy, I'm on a live stream, buddy. I'm on a live stream, buddy. I'll call you back. All right. Kai, Theos, Ain, Hologos. Okay. You see that? Or K. Ki, Ki, Theos, Ain, Hologos. Hologos. Trying to sound like a Greek. Okay. Now, do you notice the word Theos, God, has no article? It doesn't say Ke o theos en hologos. Hologos. It says theos. Literally, right? Literally, mm -hmm. if I were to translate literally from Greek, ke theos en hologos. Literally, this is it. And God was the word. So now, the Jehovah's Witnesses say, because this is Latin, Latin, number one, I don't know about Latin. I've heard about Latin. And number two, if you think this is Latin, I got <laughs> a piece of land to sell you. Um, all right. No, it's not Latin, dude. It's Greek. It's all Greek to me. <laughs> I got it. All right. This is que theos en ologos, and God was the word. So the argument is there is no definite <laughs> article before the word theos. So, does that mean John is saying the word was a God? Or does it mean something else? No, it doesn't mean the word was a God. And here's why. Now, I'm trying to not get too technical. I'm going to try to make it very simple. All right. Since John told you the word was with the God, right? I'm going to put it in brackets. On Theon, okay. Watch here. Had he then gone on and said this, look at the beauty. This is going to show you the inspiration of the Holy Spirit inspiring John to write precisely so he doesn't butcher the theology, spirit guiding him. Okay. Now, notice it says the word was with the God. Had John written and the God, O Theos, was the word? Okay, now we would have a problem. Because in Greek, if he had written and the God was the word, then that would make the word the same God he's with. So if he had put and the God was the word, then John would be saying not only is the word with the God, he is the same as the God because he is the God. So the word would be the father had he put the definite article. Okay. So if John had said, and the God was the word, or the word was the God, that means he just identified the word with the God he's with. They'd be the same person. That would be modalism. That would not be the Trinity. Exactly. You with me there? Yes. Everyone got it? So in order to make sure, because he's inspired by the Spirit, and he's not a modalist, he's a Trinitarian, whether the anti-Trinitarians like it or not, he writes, and God was the word, but he does something that's beautiful, if you understand. Notice, instead of having the word order and the word was God, instead of doing it this way, ke o logos, right? Ain, theos. Instead of writing it this way, ke o logos ain theos, which would be, right? Ke, let me... Just translate, bear with me, sister. I hope you're not getting bored with this. No, you're good. Because I want to go through this systematically. If he had done it this way, right? Pain. I got to have to do it right slowly. Theos. Right? I, Ologos, ain't Theos, right? God. He could have written this way, but why did he choose not to write it this way? I or K and O, the Logos. Word ain't was theos. Why didn't he put the words the word first in the sentence? Why did he start with and the word was with God in Greek? Because in Greek that's not the order. In English it is. 
In the Greek, the order is this. Okay? Theos, Ein, O Logos, or O Logos. And God was the word. So why did he place the word Theos at the beginning of the third sentence as opposed to putting the word there? Okay, you understand the difference? In English, mm -hmm. you can only say the word was God, not in Greek. In Greek, he could have written K, O Logos, Ain Theos, K, O Logos, Ain Theos, which would have the order we find in English, and the word was God, or he could have written this way. K, Theos, Ain Hologos, and God was the word, but both would be translated the same way in English. You'd both translate it, and the word was God. So the question is, why did he decide to put the word theos before the verb ain, as opposed to putting ologos before the verb ain? Now, do you understand what I'm asking? Mm -hmm. So you're with me, you sure? Yeah, So because he's trying to distinguish between the father and the son but he and not create that. modalism. No, 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 no. That's not the point. No, then I lost you. No, because he could have written it this way. Que ologos ain theos. And he still would have this the word different from God. That wasn't the argument. The argument is, had he put the definite article and the word was the God, then he'd make him the same God that he's with. Mm -hmm. So if you don't get it, they're not helping you. You won't be able to share it. Okay. So what did you get? What did you not get? That the reason he put... He, he doesn't put the God there at the end because no, it's, it's not, not the Father. God. It's not the God, no. Okay. Nope. I think we <laughs> it's been a long day. Think, <laughs> no, then okay. if you're not getting it, I can't help you. We're going to, because it's, it's, yeah. we're gonna I can't help you with this technical point of grammar if you didn't get the point. No, that's exactly what I did not say. I didn't say if he put the word the God at the end, he'd be the Father. No. If John wrote it this way, logos, ain, theos, right? He wrote it this way, theos, ain, or logos. It would have the same meaning. It wouldn't change. Okay. Okay. Now, I want to see if you catch what the difference is. Here it's ke, theos, ain, or logos. Here it's ke, or logos, ain, theos. What did you see in the difference? In one, the Greek? Is, uh, one is lo uh, Logos is the God. So God is the God, right? Nope. No. Not at all. Look at okay. the screen. What do you see? Kai, Theos, Kai. and Logos, right? Uh-huh. Now, what's the difference between this and this? Theos is at the beginning at the other one, and it's at the end on this one. You got it. Okay. Got it. Okay. Now, one more time. Now, do you notice K Theos doesn't have that whole before it? Uh huh. Whole Theos would mean the God. There's no whole before it, right? Right. But there is a whole before Logos, making it the word, right? Yes. Now, watch this. Is there the word whole before Theos here? No, it's exactly. Uh, and uh huh. Exactly. So it's not where you place the word theos. It's if you put the article before theos, or theos, that would make the word the same God he's with. Okay. But notice in both sentences, there is no definite article before theos. There isn't o theos, right? Right. But there is a definite article before logos, right? Right. Okay, so it's K O Logos, the word ain't Theos. And the word was Theos, God. But same thing in this construction. That's how John wrote it. He wrote it this way. K Theos ain't O Logos. There is no article before God. Exactly. So they both would mean the same thing. Okay. The only thing that would change it is if John put the word the before God. If he put and the word was the God, then things would be messed up for us. Then it means he's the God he's with. That's modalism, right? Right. So that's not the difference I'm talking about here. What I'm asking is, why then, if John could have written it this way, 
put the theos at the end of the sentence. Why then did he put it at the beginning? Because notice, theos is at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. But in this one, theos is at the end. Exactly. So, but John wrote it this way. Now, if you guys are following me, he put the word God at the beginning before the verb in. In is the verb. In is the word was. Okay. So why did John put the word God before the verb here instead of putting it at the end? Because it give you the same meaning, right? To show that the word is God. Yeah, but even if he did the other way, it'd still be God. Yeah. Okay, so why do it this way? Why put the word God before the verb? So now I want to answer that question if you understand what the point is. Okay. Yeah, answer it. Go for it. Yes. There's a reason why he put the <clears throat> word God before the verb. The verb is okay. ain, what? And here the word theos is before the verb, right? Right. Even if you wrote it this way, you'd still get the word is God. Mm -hmm. right? If you put ke o logos ain theos and the word was God, you still get the word was God by putting the word theos at the end. But he didn't write it that way. He put the word theos at the beginning before the verb ain. So does everyone understand what I'm asking now? Because this is a good question, and we may not get to the rest of the callers. We may wrap it up with this because it's been long. <clears throat> okay, did everyone understand what I'm asking? Here, John put the word theos, God, before the word aim was. The reason why this shows you the brilliance of John by the Holy Spirit. It's because when you place God before the verb, it makes it a descriptive noun. Greek, ah. grammarians, Greek grammarians have noted, Gabriel, can you get the hell out of here before I muzzle you, dude? Shut the hell up, you barking dog. Get the hell out of here. Dumb little spiritual bastard. You're trying to distract like Satan. Pit! Go to hell, meaning go to Valley of Panama. Sorry, sister. You know I am. I'm not completely correct. Okay. Scholars note that when you have in this example, the word God placed before the verb, then it's functioning as a descriptive noun. It is describing the nature of the subject. It's telling you something about the nature. So the reason why the Spirit inspired John to put the word God before the verb is because in this placement, it stresses that the word God is a descriptive noun. It's describing the qualities the characteristics that the subject has. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So if it's a descriptive noun, meaning a noun that describes your qualities in nature, then what John is really saying is, and the word as to his nature was God. And the word was God in nature. The nature of the word is the nature of God. He has the qualities of God. It's a descriptive noun. Awesome. That is amazing. So Very cool. It's not saying he's a God. It's saying he possesses the qualities, nature, characteristics of God. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And have you ever seen Theos lowercase at all yeah. in Greek? Yes. Philippians 3.19 says they, okay. they, their God is their bellies. I got Ethel, you. Are you talking about me? If you are, you're going to come on StreamYard. So I can stuff with your vomit. You with me there? So understand, everyone, that the placement of the word God before the verb is to show the qualities, characteristics, nature of the subject. The word was God in nature. The word possessed the qualities of God. The word's nature is the nature of God. And the reason why he didn't put the article before God, because if he said, and the God was the word, then that would make him the same God he's with. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You got to be clear. So number one, John didn't pl place the article before God, the God, when talking about the word. Because if he said, and the word was the God, then I would make him the God he's with. That would be right. Moses, and he's not the God he's with. Number he's two. He's describing him. Ah. Yeah. Number two, the reason why he placed the word God before the verb and God was the word. It's because in that positioning in the sentence, 
He's showing you that Jesus is God by nature. It's a descriptive now describing his nature. Amen. Okay. That's it. Was that clear now? That is clear. Thank you so much. But what you're going to really... do, you're going to go to my channel on your computer, go to the yes. search engine on YouTube, put in John 1, and watch one. the session where I go in depth so you can remember this. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, I'm trying to go to the JWs like every Friday. That's my day off. And um, we're different here. I guess a lot of people don't talk to other people about Jesus. And so everybody in our church is kind of freaked out that we go to Jehovah's Witnesses and put it up on YouTube. They're kind of acting like it's not cool. But so just pray well, for us. You do what God called you. Don't worry about them. Say, hey, you can worry about political correctness. You're going to answer to Jesus. We want these people to be saved. So God bless your ministry now. Lord willing, I got you on Skype. I will reach out to you in the upcoming weeks because I want you and your hubby, if he wants to, to share your testimony how God brought you out of Joe's Witnesses. Yeah, that would be great. It, it, it's a good story. <laughs> it's a miracle, actually. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So within a week or two, I'll reach out to you because I have another guy, Chris, I'm going to bring on as well, if the Lord wills. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you, brother. God bless you guys. God bless you. You have a good night. Praying for you and your girls. Lord, preserve you all. Glory to God. Yeah. Now. Sorry for the rest of you. I know you're waiting, but it's been over two hours. This is my third session. Tired. I'm an old man. I need rest. So God willing, how many of you want, let me know. Let's take a vote right now. How many of you want me to discuss Revelation 12 and its relationship to Mary as the queen of heaven? Tomorrow, God willing. I'll do it around between 5 and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time. 5, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time. Revisiting Revelation 12. I already did one, but you want me to do it again? How many? Revelation 12. Who is that woman that's a queen? Is it Mary? All right. Then we'll do it tomorrow. Now, here's how you're going to bless me. I need your prayers, you intercessory prayer warriors. If you really believe God has blessed me, if you believe God has called me to do ministry, I can't do it without the Holy Spirit protecting me and filling me and perfecting me. Please pray because God hears the prayers of his righteous ones. Ask the Lord to bring my daughters to me now. They're growing up without me in an adulterous home. Ask the Lord to destroy that marriage and save my daughters, to have them. Ask the Lord to grant my daughters and I miraculous physical safety, security, protection, and health. That God give me discipline to stay healthy and not succumb to gluttony or lust and walk pure and love Jesus. That my daughters are in love with Jesus and grow up to love the Lord and ask the Lord for this favor. If he tarries, I raise them up to love the Lord, and I die in their arms as they send me to heaven until Jesus returns. And do pray for the support that my PayPal patron does not decrease, that it stays steady, in fact, increases to use it to glorify the Lord, to provide for my daughters, for the ministry, and other things. May God's will be done. May he destroy my fear of finances, less of money, and use it for his glory. Because already I got one guy who unsubscribed because he says, oh, you're Catholic? I go, yeah, I am. What are you going to do about it? Unsubscribe. So I'm, some people are walking away. May I never prostitute myself. May I meet a man of integrity. Pray for me. Pray for my health and holiness and my daughters. Lord willing, tomorrow between 5 and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Revelation 12 revisited. Mary or someone else. Need your prayers and I love you. Remember, Christ died. Christ is risen. Christ is alive. The Bible is supernatural. Our God is supernatural. He's real. May the Lord illuminate us to know that Bible and its beauty because it's a miracle preserved by God for the church. And may we obey and live out that Bible to prove our love for you, Father, for you, Lord Jesus, for you, Holy Spirit. Wash us, my daughters, our loved ones, in the blood of the Lamb. Fill us to overflowing and seal us by the Spirit. Do that for my daughters, our loved ones. The work you've begun in us, we ask you, complete it, Father. Complete it, Lord Jesus. Complete it, Holy Spirit, that we die glorifying the Lord, never shaming Him or... Remain faithful until he returns, and may you return sooner than later. Maranatha. Father, have mercy. Son of God, have mercy. Holy Spirit, have mercy in Jesus' name. You better believe it. If it upsets you that I'm Catholic, I'm Catholic. Get the hell out of here. Go to hell, meaning go to the Valley of Hinnom in Israel. Buy your ticket now. Pit. Christ is risen. We love you, Jesus. Take care, guys. Lord bless.